Okay, I want to quickly walk you through uh, basically the user's interface here and just some of the right panels. Uh, we have our main toolbar over here and right now I'm just using the default uh, workspace that Photoshop comes with uh, but of course you can customize this however you want it and if you have multiple monitors you can also uh, really expand on that. Uh, but over here we on the, have on the left is our toolbar where we can access pretty much all of our main tools that we're going to be using to working on images. Uh, the magic wand, the move tool, the selection tools, our healing brush, our clone stamp, our uh, fill brush, and all the things like that. And we'll go through that a little bit later. Uh, but this is pretty much just our main toolbar. Uh, over on the right, top right, we have our navigator, uh, which allows us to zoom in and out of images. And I'll just go ahead and create uh, a document here so we can actually see an image and I'll just go ahead and paint something in. We can see that we can just zoom into our image uh, with our navigator. We can also slide this bar in and out and then we can move our red uh, box on the navigator to move around or we can also use the sliders on the sides of our image. So go ahead and just zoom back out. We also have our info uh, which is giving us uh, all of our RGB values for our colors, also our CYMK values, and then our X and Y uh, axis for uh, the coordinates. And it's also giving us the document size so we can see how many me megabytes our image is uh, to see if it, maybe it's too high or too low. So there's a couple of things we have in there. We can also go to our histogram uh, which will give us an overall uh, image display of the color balance in our image. I'm just going to go back to our navigator and then we're going to go down to the next panel. And actually our navigator got a little large there so we can pull that back down and we can take a look at the next one which is going to be our color. And now we can adjust our colors in here selecting actual RGB values or uh, selecting on the bottom here uh, with our eyedropper tool along the bottom along with a white and a black on the end. Uh, but what we can also do is just go over to the toolbar and click on that color and then select our uh, color within the color picker which is the pretty much the basic default windows color picker although it does have a lot of uh, extra options in there. And we can also just show only web colors if we're working with web and we want lower uh, images. So I'll go ahead and get cancel. We're going to look at our next one which is color swatches which is already preset uh, color swatches that we can use and the eyedropper tool automatically comes up over that and we can just select those. We can also create our own color swatches just by uh, making a color that we have. And then what we can do is uh, once we move over to a blank area we get this paint bucket tool. We can go ahead and click in there and then we can name our swatch. And I'm just going to call this test and click OK or hit enter. And now we have this swatch in here we can select at any time. Uh, the next thing we have is styles and I'm not really going to go into this uh, just yet because styles uh, pretty much has to be covered by itself but that's another way to access sort of the default styles for an image and I can show you uh, sort of how that works. I can just create a small ellipse really quick and I'm just going to throw a style on there and you can see it adds uh, depth and uh, we can add shadows and gradients to it and different things like that, outlines, uh, but I'll go into that a little more in depth just a little bit later. I'll go ahead and just delete that layer. The next thing we have is our history. Now this is going to keep track of every single option that we do uh, within Photoshop and every single tool that we use uh, up until the point where you hit the end of your history state. I have it set to 50 right now so this will go back 50 steps. We can see it goes all the way back to new. Uh, but we also have a really neat feature, feature in here too uh, which is snapshot. If you get into uh, about 50 steps in and you know you're about to lose a bunch of uh, settings and you want to go back to a part of the document, you can create a snapshot. If we go up to the top, we can see we can go to the new sorts just by itself and then our snapshot of where we're at right now. And then you don't need to use history states if you're creating snapshots. Uh, but pretty much all of our tools, uh, even deleting layers and everything is just all uh, within our history. Uh, the next thing we have is our actions, which are, uh, you can create our own actions if we wanted to, and pretty much it's for batch processing or a really quick way of doing a sequence of uh, effects on something. So in other words, uh, let's say I want to create a box and then add a little, add a style to it, 
uh, like I did before and then maybe change the image size I could record all those into actions and then all I'd really have to do is hit play and then it would automatically do that to any object that I create or in any document that I'm working on so those can be uh, very helpful and in speed of productivity but I'll go into those a little bit later underneath our history is probably one of our most important panels which is the layers panel and this allows us to create uh, different layers for working on our image uh, in the top right we can go up to file new layer or sorry I just click the arrow and go to new layer and I'm not going to name the layer but of course we could call this uh, test layer and hit enter click OK now we have this test layer on here uh, what I could do is I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a brush in here and just sort of paint on this image and now I'm not drawing on the same layer as I have all those stars I kinda created in the background and it's another way of separating uh, certain parts of your images so I can create another layer and with a different color and go ahead and paint that on and this way you're not ruining anything else that you're working on and you can turn your layers on and off we'll get it more into that a little bit later because uh, you can do a lot with layers and especially with our blending modes uh, changing opacity levels uh, our fill if we're working uh, with some other parts and certain styles and things like that so there's a lot we can do with layers but we'll get into that once we actually start working on a project the next tab that we have is channels and this is going to isolate each one of our colors within our image we can have the full RGB uh, red green red green and blue image or we can isolate the red part of the image the green part and the blue part and we can see how certain uh, parts of the image start to disappear with different colors so this way we can isolate a certain channel and it'll display it in black and white uh, of course white being the least amount of that color and black being the most amount of that color so you can do some editing on individual channels if you want so you can remove uh, certain colors from the image and now we can see we have a pretty interesting looking effect there if we were actually going for that uh, the next tab we have over here is paths and when you're working with paths it's for creating shape objects and things like that and then we can start working on that but we'll take a look at that a little bit later because we're not really going to get into drawing shapes just yet uh, we have a few other things up on top which are kind of hidden and that is our brushes panel which we can go ahead and actually create our own custom brushes or we can uh, fully edit some of the ones that are already available uh, what we can also do is go in and add other brushes that are available because right now I have more than the default Photoshop brushes uh, default you'll probably see from this top layer here down uh, to a little bit lower to about right there but we also have all of these other shapes that we could easily load in uh, just by going to the little tab right here and we can select any of these other types of brushes and I'm going to select this one right here and if we click uh, append then what it'll do is add to our existing library and keep uh, adding in all our brush states or we can click uh, OK and just replace all of our brushes with just that specific set and like I said you can create your own and then create your own sets and have those load in and out as you want you can also get an interactive preview on the bottom here as we scroll over the different uh, settings here for our brushes and then we can adjust our color dynamics and things like that scattering uh, shape dynamics and there's really a lot you can do with this uh, but of course I'll get into that a little bit later uh, we, now we have our tool presets up here which I won't get into just yet and then our layer compositions and those are pretty much our all of our visible uh, panels we also have a lot more if we go up to window it's going to show all of our different panels that are available now a lot of these are not checked because they are part of other panels and they are displayed uh, but they're hidden uh, but we have some other things in here like animation we have an animation toolbar we can do for creating uh, gif animation for web or even working with video Go ahead and I can close out that panel. I'm just not really letting me right now. <laughs> so I just kind of move that out of the way. Uh, but what we can also do is we have our info, uh, which we already pulled up, but we have a paragraph setting. And this is for uh, working with text. We have to work on our characters and paragraph. And we also have our swatches, of course, that we had before built in. Uh, but there's just a, a collection of these and you want to go through 
and see what isn't showing if you need to uh, maybe work with something in that panel. Uh, otherwise, you can just uh, keep it hidden and go to your workspace, default workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and close out this image. And I'm gonna, not going to save it. We also have a lot more options up on top. If we go to image uh, or layer, filters, uh, all of that's displayed on the top. So I'm going to go back up to file new, just create a new document. And I'm just going to paint this sort of that red color. We can go up to image and now we can still adjust our mode uh, like we did before. We can go to adjustments and adjust the levels of our image. Uh, we can select auto levels, auto contrast. There's all these different uh, image editing options that are in here. We can invert the image if we wanted to, uh, the color. Uh, what we can also do is adjust the image size, the canvas size, uh, pixel aspect ratio. We could rotate the canvas uh, if we wanted to. And then we can go to layer and this will give us all of our different layer options. We can merge layers down, we can create new layers, uh, we can add fill layers, we can create uh, layers that manipulate other layers. Uh, so there's quite a bit we can do in there. And then of course our selections and then we of course have our filters. And then with filters, we can go through and select all the different variety of filters. And I'll just show you one really quick, kind of what they do if you're not familiar with filters. And I just kind of have uh, this brushed on image right here. And I am going to go to blur, Gaussian blur. And now you can see that with this filter, I can blur out that image. And we can create different types of effects uh, by doing so. So the more you start using and get familiar with some of these uh, options, you can see they can actually create pretty neat things by using filters. And you'll find that some you use all the time and some you'll hardly ever use at all. Uh, but that's just one of our filters right there, our Gaussian blur. But of course, we have tons of different other ones. And actually, uh, with some of these, it will actually pull up our filter editor. And we can see here that we have that all worked up. And we have all of these different filters available now that we can click on and it'll display uh, what the filter is doing interactively over here. And then we can adjust our other options for that filter. So we can adjust the strength in this case, uh, the detail, smoothness. And then when we're done, or we can uh, actually even have a layer panel right here and we can add another type of effect. So there's quite a bit we can do. We can keep adding these filters on top of other filters. I'm going to go ahead and click OK when I'm finished and you can see that it automatically updated that uh, pretty much immediately because it's actually uh, processing the effect in the filter gallery which is what that's called but not all of the filters will reflect within the filter gallery uh, just a lot of the stylized and our artistic versions uh, brush strokes some of those will be in there uh, some of the other effects will not like find edges will not show up in there so you pretty much have to go through and figure out uh, which kind of filters you'd like to use and what kind of go back a little bit later and show you some techniques uh, that you can use for actually doing so. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Or Actually, before I do that, uh, there's one other thing I want to show you the user's interface and that is how to access image ready. If you look at the bottom of our toolbar down here, we can select uh, this button on the bottom and what that's going to do is transfer our document that we have we're working with and it's going to open up Adobe image ready and uh, bring our document into there for editing. Okay, so now we have our document within image ready and we can do any uh, changes we need uh, when we're working with web or working with the website, uh, Im images for the web, creating GIF animations, and that we can all do within image ready and uh, set our different optimizations. And we'll get into this a little bit later because image ready is actually an entirely separate program from Photoshop, uh, but it's uh, very nice to have. So I'm going to go back and if I want to bring this image back into Photoshop, I want to click this bottom button again, because actually right now Photoshop is open and image ready are open as separate applications, and this document is no longer in Photoshop, because once we transfer it to image ready, it is a image ready file, and in order to get it back into Photoshop or to edit in Photoshop, we need to select that button again. So then now we can bring it back into Photoshop.